Stan, I'm 24 years old, I'm from Birmingham and I identify as a gay man. When you grow up Muslim and gay, um, you constantly hear from uh, the priests in the mosque and Muslims around you that, oh, homosexuality is wrong, it can never be accepted by Islam. If you are gay, um, then you're probably going to be sent to hell. That's literally what people used to say. If you're gay, you're going to get sent to hell. Um, it was never a positive thing. Um, there was never any debate about it. There was no discussion. It was pretty much black and white. If you're gay, you are not a Muslim and you're going to be sent to hell. But there's me who's been raised in uh, a Muslim family. I've been fasting like everybody else. I've been praying like everybody else. I've been going to mosque, standing in the lines of prayer, listening to the same sermon that everybody else does. Probably leading um, a much better life compared to some of the stories I heard about, you know, people around me about what they were doing. But yet yeah, they were so adamant that no, if you are gay, you're just not a Muslim. You can't, you're not accepted by our community at all. So it really confused me as in, I've stood in lines of prayer at the mosque. No lightning bolt has struck me down while I'm standing there. Do you know what I mean? I still felt positively impacted by religion just as much as anybody else did, you know, at the time. Um, and I felt like when I did pray, things were being listened to about other things in life. Um, so I didn't understand how people could stand there and then tell me that being gay Muslim wasn't, you couldn't be it, it wasn't synonymous. Because I knew that I was positively impacted by religion, much like anybody else would have been. And I was doing all the same things that every other religious person around me was doing. You know, nothing was stopping me from doing it. So I was like, well, you can be because I am gay and I am Muslim. But obviously I didn't speak openly about the fact that I was gay or that I am gay rather. You do, um, you know, feel like, okay, I'm going to be ostracized if they do know. So then I thought, okay, if, which, which one do I really want to be here? The one that's going to keep me safe in the community and, and have people like me and, and, and allow, allow me to have friends and be involved with people? Or am I going to um, allow myself to be the person that's possibly going to then open myself up to bullying and be ostracized? Which one do I want to be here? and I uh, chose the religious side. So then I spent a lot of time being super religious and I didn't grow a beard or anything, you know, like walk out with a, a hat and everything. Um, but I used to pray quite often. I used to make sure to go to the mosque quite often. Like every year I used to do all the fasting and try to really ensure that I was living a good Muslim life. And I always used to pray every prayer, you know, to make me straight, basically. I was like, I don't understand why I'm gay. Why am I um, going through this? If you are gay, the only sort of um, advice that Muslims offer to people who were struggling with their sexuality, which I'd found online, was if you are gay, then that's the choice. It's not a sin to have homosexual thoughts, but it's a sin to act on it. So you must remain celibate your entire life. So then am I then expected to remain celibate and get married and be a dutiful, you know, Indian and Muslim person to um, son to my parents and get married to a woman and live a lie or you know because isn't that just as bad isn't that just as terrible um, the, to hide a secret from somebody and ruin a, a poor woman's life and, and, and basically lie to her your entire life that advice can't be right that's still just as bad really I tried to pray it away um, but then I, as I got older I realized it's not changing it's not changing, I don't know what to do about it. But you realize that actually, I'm gay, that's not gonna change. But which, which one am I really choosing here? Am I really choosing to be gay or am I choosing to be Muslim? Which one am I really choosing? And I was like, actually, I'm choosing to be religious over my actual sexuality that I can't change. And then I realized that, do you know what? The two can be actually synonymous. The two can be together. Um, nothing stops me from praying, nothing stops me from you know, doing the, the things that good Muslims are supposed to do, right? So how can then anybody else point a finger at me and say, I can't be who I want to be? The last time I went to the mosque was, I think it was about two years ago. And every Eid, you have to go and do a prayer in the mosque in the morning. Much like how at Christmas, you have midnight mass. You know, for Eid, you go to the, the mosque in the morning at like 9am and do a, a, an Eid prayer. And I was sitting there and the um, priest, the Imam, he was preaching a sermon to everybody. And he was a young, a young British lad who had become a priest like quite early on in his life. He was British Asian as well, so it was like he must have a good understanding of the Western world 
Um, he has a, you know, a, a young opinion on things. He's probably going to speak some sense. And he was talking about how uh, Muslims make up a large proportion of um, the jail community and all that sort of stuff, like really saying how we need to make a difference within the Muslim community and open our eyes and educate ourselves. And I was like, this guy is like really preaching some sense. I was like, you're doing so well. And then you rounded it off with, um, but be careful because they still say it's okay to be gay and Muslim nowadays, but we need to be wary of certain things like that. And then I just realized, I was like, do you know, do you know what? You can try and make as much a difference as you want, but for some people it is gonna be black and white. But the best thing that you can do is just educate them. If there's no gay Muslims that they haven't met, you need to be that gay Muslim and show them that, oh, actually, it can be together. Um, so that's why I took on that role and responsibility to do that and educate people about it, because, you know, there, are, there will be very many, very many closeted um, gay children in um, South Asian and Muslim families across the world. I recognise that I live in a country where I'm, I'm quite privileged, actually, because I live in the UK, right, where being gay is so open and it's so accepting now. Um, so it would be sort of an insult to like, you know, people living in fear in other countries like Pakistan. If I then denied my, my identity and didn't proactively make steps to, you know, sort of uh, make it better for people here, I feel like that would be an, almost an insult to everybody who lives in fear in other Muslim countries. Do you know what I mean? Because they don't have the privilege that I have. I, I need to recognise that I have this privilege and be out and open about it, basically. That's how I feel.